What's up guys? It is Sunday, so that means it's time to keep on marching through the CD collection. We are on video number 66. Uh, I don't know how many there's going to be total. We're still in the G section. Going to slowly start wrapping up the G's. I think we're going to make it to like the GR portion of the of the collection in this video. But we're just going to keep rolling through. I think I may have uh, inadvertently lied to you guys in the last video uh, when I was finishing up the last... Uh, album that I showed was from the band Gore Rotted and I thought that that was the only album that I'd owned from them under that moniker before they changed their name simply to the Rotted. Uh, I was wrong. I do have uh, one more. This one actually came out before the one that I showed in the last video. Uh, this is Gore Rotted with uh, Only Tools and Corpses. I purchased this on Discogs uh, right before uh, I deleted my old Discogs and, and have created my new one, and it, it got delivered sometime during the move to the new house, and I just forgot about putting it on the shelf. Came across it this week and, and put it on the shelf and figured at least I found it right at this portion of the video to, to, to show it in the CD collection. Uh, next up, uh, we have some Brutal Death Metal out of... Uh, I forget where this band is from. Uh, Columbia, maybe. Uh, this is Gore Trade with Mistaken Conception. I don't know how well the artwork is going to pick up on that. It is very, uh, very dark artwork. A uh, pretty solid brutal death metal. Um, this they have a, a probably about five or six full links out. I think this one hits right in the middle of their discography. Uh, this is unfortunately the only one that I've checked out, but I, I do like this. It is pretty solid. A little slab of brutal death metal there. I, and I think they're out of Columbia. I could be wrong on that, though. Uh, next up, a band out of Canada that you probably all know. Uh, we have Gore Guts with their Considered Dead, uh, first full length. Killer stuff here, killer death metal. I think a lot of people are surprised when they find out what my favorite uh, Gore Guts album is. We will get to that in just a moment. But this is a really solid debut full length from Gore Guts. Before they got just super, super technical and, and all that stuff. Uh, next up, this is the one that probably should be my favorite. Uh, Musically-wise, it's probably their best album, but it's not my favorite. Uh, this is Gore Guts with The Erosion of Sanity. I think this one and the Considered Dead one that I just showed are both Russian bootlegs. Uh, the original presses on these are quite expensive. And I got the, the bootlegs for like $7 each. So I just went ahead. They're actually really... As, I mean, you have to be careful nowadays, too, because these bootleggers are so good at, at uh, copying these albums. At least the seller that I got these from was, was up front uh, that these were boots. When I purchased them at the price that I was getting, I knew if, if they weren't listed as bootlegs, it should have been a red flag immediately anyway. But these uh, bootleggers, man, they're, they're getting to the point where you have to really watch uh, your matrixing and everything and... Uh, pay attention to the jewel cases. I know, it, uh, you know, you can swap out a jewel case easy, but these little cheap jewel cases are. It's very similar on a lot of the bootlegs that I've come across. That it's just these real thin. Uh, the the little black piece is just flat there. On the, I can't really explain it. If you've seen one, you probably know what I'm talking about. But as far as bootlegs go, those are those are like top quality bootlegs as far as the sound production goes. And uh, just the, the way that they made the disc look almost identical to the originals. And then we have what is my favorite uh, Gore Guts album. And I think I get some, some hate from this sometimes because people think it's just wanky noise. I don't know why I like this one so much. Uh, but it, for me, ever since high school, this has been the my go-to Gore Guts album. Uh, this is Obscura. This is an original press from 98. I think it was 98. Yeah, that this came out on uh, Olympic and Slip Disc. It is a promo copy uh, back when I was purchasing this way back. That's all I could find online. Uh, that was back in the days when you had eBay and you actually had to send a, a personal check in the mail. If you, if you bought something, you sent a check through snail mail, and then after they got your check and it cleared, they mailed you your item. That was That is showing my age. Uh, a lot of you probably have no idea that's how eBay used to be. But that's how I, pur <clears throat> how I purchased this. And back then, that's the only way I could find this album was uh, on a promo copy. I've had this in my collection forever. And uh, for me, this is this is my go-to Gore Guts album. And some people think this is just noisy, 
uh, wanky, awful stuff, but I, I don't know. I just love that. It is, unfortunately, the, the last Gore Guts uh, release that I picked up. The uh, follow-up to that is, is very strong, uh, From Wisdom to Hate. I want to get that on CD at some point as well. And then they had a comeback album, uh, Colored Sands, I think that's what it was. I checked it out and I enjoyed it. I just have not picked it up yet. Uh, next up, we have some Death Grind out of Kentucky. Uh, this is Gorgie with Birth of Damnation. I believe this is the band's uh, debut album. I believe they're split up now. This came out in 2011 on Horror, Pain, Gore, Death. I got this in one of those HP GD grab bags. Pretty solid uh, slab of death metal, kind of death grindy death metal. Pretty good. Uh, I have not sought out any more of their material, but for, for what it is, this album is pretty solid. Uh, next up, uh, last night on on Ken uh, Ken's death metal crib, um, they had a live stream going where they were talking about some of their favorite releases from the year so far, and the topic of kind of power trios and death metal came up, and I think this band kind of fits that bill. Uh, this is Gashudar, Gashudar, with a morbid despotic ritual. Uh, this was released on Rotted Life Records. I think this came out last year. Uh, it was either last year or 2020, but I think it came out last year. Solid slab of uh, old school death metal. Believe this band is out of Russia. Uh, could be mistaken on that. I, I've kind of been wrong lately. Um, the brain isn't kind of functioning the way it used to. But this is really solid stuff. It has some little doomy uh, parts going on throughout this. I, I really do dig this. I like the the idea of kind of the power trios in death metal, especially when it's kind of stripped down, um, caveman-esque, old-school death metal. It just feels like that the 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 three, uh, keeping it simple, just the, the, the power three in the group just, uh, just put out some really killer releases. There's several bands doing that and doing that well right now. Uh, next up, this is a band out of Romania. Uh, this is Gothic with Demons. This is kind of... It's listed, I believe, as Death Doom, and I mean, I have, I, I can see that that genre tag uh, fitting for this, but there are like some goth metal uh, moments going on in this. I was really into this when it came out. Uh, this came out, I think, in twenty. I don't see a date on it. I'm guessing twenty around 2017, 2016, uh, when this came out. I believe this was the last full length that this band has put out. And I was really into this when it came out, and I just haven't returned to it like I thought I would. Uh, I, I do like it. I wanted to kind of seek out some of their uh, prior albums as well, but I just haven't I haven't come back to this the way that I thought I would. But it is a pretty solid uh, little slab of kind of deathy, doom metal, gothic metal. I mean, the, but it, it, it can be abrasive at times, too. Uh, next up. Uh, this one came out. Uh, this has to have been out for a while. Um, let's see, uh, 2011. And this I got this in a uh, kind of a a bulk uh, bundle of Regimental Records grab. Uh, not a grab bag, but just a, a Regimental Records kind of bulk purchase. And I did that I think before I even started doing this uh, this channel. If I if I didn't do it before I started, it was at the early portions of this channel. Uh, this is Graf Vulleth with a uh, Long Live Death. I believe this band is out of New Jersey. Uh, solid uh, black metal. I, it, I, I haven't listened to this in quite some time, admittedly, but I remember really liking this one. Uh, it was kind of one of these standout albums that I got in that uh, kind of regimental records uh, disc bundle that I got in. Had to have one album that can, uh, well, actually there's some more in this, in this particular video, but you gotta have that one that auto Someone sees it and auto hits the thumbs down dislike button. Every time I show uh, something like this in one of these videos, I get an immediate thumbs down. Sometimes I get some some uh, some comments about it as well. But you know, I, if I like the way it sounds and I like the music, I'm going to pick it up. Uh, this is Grand Belial's Key with Kasharat. Uh, kind of, uh, I mean, this is black metal, uh, pagany style black metal. I mean, if you're if you know this band then you know what it's about. I'm not going to uh, get into the themes or anything. Just the, you got you guys know. If you know, you know. So, uh, that is the only album that I own from that band, but that is my favorite release from them, so that kind of works out. Uh, next up, this is a, uh, a one-man death metal project out of, I think, Illinois. 
And I keep telling myself that I'm going to return to this and spend some more time with it, and I just have not done so. Uh, I don't know why, but this is Granulated with their uh, 2020 demo. It's four tracks, uh, very staticky, very fuzzy style of death metal. Uh, I mean, it, it is, as I was uh, talking earlier, kind of stripped down, uh, simplistic, just dark eerie death metal and and i do like this and i keep saying i'm going to come back and, and revisit and i have not done so maybe after this video uh this will go straight into the cd player and, and be revisited uh it, it's kind of it can be a, a bit of a tough listen i mean it does have that kind of um abrasive static staticky uh dissonance type stuff going on in that uh next up we have a band out of germany this is kind of um shoegazy slash uh, atmospheric black metal, depre very depressive style black metal. Probably going to butcher the band name. Uh, Grosit, Grosit with a <laughs> Tyranny der Tristis. Yeah. Uh, this came out on Self Mutilation Services. Uh, this is just an EP. I think this clocks in about 25 minutes, uh, if, if memory serves me correct. Pretty decent stuff. I, I told myself that I was going to seek out some more. Of, of the material from this project as well and I just have not done so but I do like this it says it was limited to 500 copies in 2013 so I mean that's kind of uh, CDs were still selling at that point now if you have a 500 uh, CD run for something like that you're never going to clear out the uh, the stock on that next up a band out of Sweden that we all know uh, this is Grave uh, fantastic Swedish death uh, Swedish death metal uh, this is like the uh, essential pickup that you have to have from grave it's got the into the grave um, f full length on this and then it has the uh, tremendous pain and the uh, some demo tracks that came out before that I think I forgot what the name of the uh, the actual it was like promo something uh, was the name of the actual demo but the uh, the tremendous pain single on that is fantastic the the full length uh, into the grave that for me that's the that's the grave full length that you have to own I mean that's just an essential essential slab of Swedish death metal I don't own a ton of grave material but uh, for me I could be happy I think this I could own this and, and be just uh, completely satisfied as far as grave material goes I do have the uh, back from the grave full length it came out sometime sometime later after those this came out in 2002 this one's pretty solid as well but it's just that those demo tracks and that first full length for me uh, that's just that's just where it's at for grave and then I have their last uh, full length uh, out of respect for the dead this one's been out for a while even though it's their last full length that uh, 20 maybe 20 either 2017 or 2015 uh, it, for some reason those two maybe it says on the disc doesn't really matter but it's been uh, 2015 it has been a while it's been what seven years so uh, this one's pretty good uh, the one that came out before this I did like a little bit better I just have not picked it up at some point I may extend on my grave discography but I just haven't gotten around to that uh, next up, we have a band out of Norway. Uh, this is Grave Declaration with uh, the Night Shift, Worship Night Shift Worshiper. Uh, this is kind of symphonic, blackened mellow death. Uh, if, if, if I can fit any more genre tags in there on top of that, maybe I could. This is their debut EP. Uh, came out in 2008. Really solid stuff. I, I dig this quite a bit. Uh, it is uh, Christian themed. That may turn some people off, but... I, the themes don't really get to me. I, I mean, I can I can get behind some of this stuff, and I really dig this one. Uh, this was what kind of turned me on to this band. Unfortunately, they only put this out in a full length that came out uh, after that, in, entitled "When Dying Souls Scream Praise." I really like this full length as well. Uh, it took me a long time to actually pick this one up, but it's solid. And uh, I wish this band had had extended on their discography and put out some more stuff, but. I don't know if they're still together or not. This came out quite some time ago, uh, 2013. So they haven't put anything out this long. I don't know if they ever will, but hopefully, hopefully they'll get around to releasing some more material if they are still active. Uh, changing gears completely, we go from the the Christian kind of uh, 
theme band to one that is quite the opposite. Uh, we have Grave Desecrator with Dust to Lust. This is their last full length that they put out. This came out in 2016 on Season of Mist. Uh, this is a band out of Brazil. Uh, black and death metal. It's more of kind of death and black metal. The the black metal portion is definitely more prevalent. Uh, the death metal elements are there, but this is just some nasty, evil stuff. And it definitely has that South American vibe going on. You can kind of feel uh, the geography. You can feel the region in the actual music itself. It is the only full length, it, actually the only material that I own from this band, but I say this like every other band. I, I would like to pick up some more of their material. Uh, next up, we have a, a project from uh, Varg Heist Records. Uh, this is Grave Gnosis with Lug Negrito. Probably butchered that. Uh, this is kind of... This is black metal. Um, it's atmospheric in the sense that uh, it, it, it feels almost ritualistic. It has like ritualistic atmospheres going on. It's very it's a very different listen, especially if you go into it and you see it tagged as atmospheric black metal. You may be thinking it's going to sound a certain way, but uh, for me, I feel like the atmospheres are cre created uh, through this kind of ritualistic tone that's going on throughout this album. Uh, solid stuff. I really do like this. Um, it can, it can, this is one of those albums that can kind of, uh, transform your mood, uh, depending on what kind of mood you're in. This one, this is kind of one of those transformation albums that you kind of have to be careful with sometimes. Uh, next up we have some sludgy industrial, uh, stuff. I, I, I forget where this band is out of. Uh, this is the only full length that they put out. I think it's the only release that they put out period and, and they are now split up. Uh, this is Grave in the Sky with uh, Cutlery Hits China, English for the hearing impaired. It does have a typo there on the spine. It says English fought the hearing impaired. It almost uh, got me tongue-tied there. Um, I'm not the biggest industrial person, honestly, but uh, this kind of works. I like the way that they're able to tie it into this kind of sludgy, doomy uh, atmosphere. Those, those, those genres can kind of... Uh, blend together kind of seamlessly and they do a good job on this kind of has some like movie themes going on uh throughout the throughout the album but i i do uh i wish i i could have heard a little bit more from this project before they called it quits uh next up i'm just i have just recently started getting into this band uh let me take a swig here this is a band out of Germany, uh, power metal, uh, traditional heavy metal, has some speed metal vibes. This was a broken down box set, I guess, that a seller was selling, uh, like pulled them out and sold the albums individually. So, and they were super cheap. So I picked these three up and I, I enjoyed what I heard through these. I believe the box set was like I called the Middle Ages uh, box set. This is Grave Digger. Uh, this one is entitled Tunes of War. Uh, pretty good stuff. I, it, it's it's very catchy. Um, I liked it better than I, I kind of anticipated that I would. I don't know why I've taken this long to really uh, seek out and listen to any Grave Digger material because it is a band that I, I, I can remember being in school 20, 22, 20, between uh, 25 years ago, maybe, uh, and, and <clears throat> if they've been around that long, but I'm sure they have, um, and seeing that logo kind of plastered everywhere back then i wasn't really into power metal i wasn't super into the traditional stuff it was kind of death metal or bust and uh, i mean new metal was coming along i was one of those guys and i just never took the time out i, I found power metal back then i just felt it was cheesy um and and, and I, I, I couldn't get into it and now i guess uh having grown i i, I appreciate stuff like that a lot more uh, next one is uh, Knights of the Cross from Grave Digger. These were all, I think, in the same box set. It was kind of a um, Middle Ages. I, I forget the the actual theme of the box set, but these uh, these albums all kind of have that same kind of theme going on. So I think it was called like Middle Ages or something like that. And then we have um, this one was my favorite of the three, Excalibur. This one has some bonus tracks on it as well, but uh, of the three that I got out of out of that little purchase, this one was my favorite, but it has kind of opened my eyes to this band. It makes me want to uh, 
dig a little deeper and, and see what else they have to offer because all three of these albums were, were rock solid. Uh, next up, we have some death metal off of Dark Descent. Go figure. This is, I, I say death metal. It has death metal. It has some black metal, even thrash vibes going on in this as well. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like this is their, their um, weakest full length. I think they have three out, and this one is in the middle, and it... It just doesn't does do it for me like some of their other material does, but this is the only one that I own. Uh, this is Grave Hill with uh, When All Roads Lead to Hell. I mean, it, it's pretty decent, but they I think that it was the debut, the one that had the black and white um, cover art. I forget the name of it. I, I still want to grab that one at some point because I do remember checking that one out and enjoying it quite a bit. This one, I mean, is not bad. It's just not my favorite release from the band, but unfortunately it is the only one that I own. It still gets some playtime here and there, but they do have some stronger material out there. Uh, next up, I just recently picked this up at the uh, Tennessee Metal Devastation uh, Festival that I went to a couple months ago. I had this on tape for the longest time. Uh, I, I received it in a Metalhead box very early on. It was in one of the very first Metalhead box uh uh, subscription boxes that I ever received. Uh, this is Grave Huffer with Your Fault. I had it on cassette for all those times. I've been wanting it on, on, on CD and I just haven't got around to it. So I got to the uh, festival and they had these available for sale at the at their little booth, so at their table. So I definitely had to grab one because you guys know that for me, uh, CDs are life. Uh, if it, it, It's CD or bust as far. I mean, I'll take other uh, physical formats if I have to if it's the only thing available but if it's on CD I'd much rather have it on that format and then I have their newest full length entitled Necro Eclosion uh, so just some killer stuff there it's a if you're not familiar with Grave Huffer they are a uh, band out of Missouri they have this kind of thrash metal slash grindcore uh, crust pump feel going on at times they're able to switch up the genres uh, pretty seamlessly from track to track and each track will have its own identity and uh, the stuff sounds really good they're able to pull off the different sounds uh, quite seamlessly and then this uh, Necro Eclosion actually came with a, a little Grave Huffer uh, guitar pick I always just keep this in the jewel case so I won't lose it uh, next up if you had if you didn't hit the uh, thumbs down if you're one of those that did that that hits the uh, thumbs down for this kind of um, this kind of material. If you didn't hit it for the Grand Belial's key, you'll hit it for this band. Uh, we have Graveland with their epilogue uh, demo. This is the Witching Hour Productions uh, reissue. This one was reissued in 2015. The original uh, demo or or uh, or promo that this was a part of came out years and years before that. It's been out quite some time. This is not the best uh, Graveland material. I mean, it's not bad, but it's, I own three releases from this band, and of the three that I own, this is my least favorite. But funny enough, all three releases that I own were released in succession, and they are all demo uh, materials. We have uh, In the Glare of Burning Churches from Graveland. Uh, this is probably my favorite of the three releases that I own. This is the uh, Red Stream Records reissue with the O-Card. Same cover art almost. It just doesn't have the big logo there on the uh, on the actual jewel case part. There's the back. And then we have the Celtic Winter uh, demo. This was the uh, Forever Plagued Records reissue. I'm not sure when this one came out. I got this one super cheap. And uh, it was definitely worth the the price of admission for this uh, this is uh, before they got over the top into the kind of uh, Viking metal pagan Viking metal sound I mean that they, they still have that pagan-esque feel going on as far as uh, being straightforward black metal in these three releases but for me that are that especially these two uh, are the strongest of the Graveland material and then last, we have some more death metal. Uh, this is a band out of Chile. Uh, this is Graverd with their non-demo. Uh, uh, this has their uh, the non-EP, uh, and then it has uh, bonus uh, promo material on this. It just says bonus promo one. I do like the uh, 
the non uh, EP on this uh, quite a bit. And it starts out with these kind of monkish chants going on. You guys know that I, I'm just kind of a sucker for that. And then when it gets into it, and then you have the the death metal has a bit of a blackened vibe at times going on, but just killer stuff. And definitely another band that you can kind of feel that uh, South American flavor coming through in the actual music. So killer stuff there from Graveyard. Uh, that's all for this particular video. We will continue on and uh, get close to wrapping up the G's if we don't completely wrap them up uh, next Sunday in uh, video number 67. If I don't make another video before then, which I really need to do, I uh, hope you guys have a great week and a happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you very soon. I promise.